All right, time for a little education time. Um, Tadpole 696 sent me uh, a really cool tool that uh, every a, every uh, AR guy should own, especially if you're replacing your barrel in your AR or if you're putting the aftermarket bolt carrier in your AR, bolt carrying group, you should have this tool. Um, thank you, Rich. I noticed things not cheap. I've been pricing them for two months thinking about getting one and you had one shipped here and I really appreciate it. Uh, you get these from Brownells and before I say anything else, I have to say Brownells is one of the few gun dealers that is not gouging the gun community because of this horrible tragedy that happened. And uh, shame on you if you're a gun dealer and you're jacking all your prices up because of this horrible tragedy that happened to them poor little kids. Guys, really need to think about what you're doing. Selling magazines for $60 a piece. It's not right, man. It's not right to the gun community. It's not right that you're making money off the blood of, of children. Period. So, that's what I say. And there's all kinds of crazy videos out there about this stuff, so... Uh, that's what's really bothering me. That ain't right. Um, okay, this is uh, Brownells. Like I said, their P mags on their website are still fifteen to seventeen dollars. They're not sixty. So, this is for a, a two two three uh, or or five five six, and um, it's a no. Jesus God, what's wrong with me? Whew. It's a no-go and a go gauge uh, headspace, headspace checking gauges. It's what, the, it's what it is. And you get two of them as a set. Now you can buy one or the other, but it's better if you buy the, if you buy both. You could buy one and you can just get the no-go gauge, but I would get both of them. Um, this is, uh, these are about 40 bucks a piece. So for two of them, you're looking at about $80. And, uh, this is the go gauge, okay? And it comes with a rubber ball. I guess that's supposed to protect them from bumping into each other, so. You gotta remember, these are very, very precisionally made. If they're not the exact size they're supposed to be, uh, they'll give you a false reading. So that's why you need these. And this one is the no-go gauge. So when you put this gauge in, your bolt should not lock in place. When you put this gauge in, your bolt should lock in place. So if that happens, you have good headspace. Very important when you check headspace. If you if you buy a mil spec uh, bulk carrying group, nobody really checks the headspace, but technically you should, you should, but you don't have to. Now, if you're getting a barrel put in your AR, you definitely need to check the headspace. And uh, hopefully, I'm going to show you how to do it. Rich, thanks a lot. Uh, Rich has a really I'm not just saying it because he sent me something. Rich has a lot of good videos on his gun channel. You will learn a lot from Rich. He, he disassembles ARs all the way to the bone, builds them from the ground up, puts all kinds of parts in them, does videos, step-by-step -step videos, very educational. A lot of very, very educational videos. And uh, hopefully he comes in part of our Guns, Guts, and Glory network. Hope you come over, Rich, because I think you'll be a great addition. So... That's it. Sorry guys, one of the air raid sirens are going off. No, we just don't have one of those. We have about five of those. Uh, depending on what township is having a little fire, the air raid siren goes off. So if there's ever a nuclear war, nobody will know. Uh, if there's ever a, 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 a shit hit the fan emergency, nobody will know because nobody pays attention to it because everyone thinks it's a fire. It's a really stupid, stupid thing. Okay, first thing we're going to do is, uh, this is my Spikes Tactical Bolt, and uh, I think uh, the bolt head is a Noveski, pretty sure, uh, I'm not sure, uh, that's what the man told me, that he put this together for me. Um, first thing you got to do is just take this, take this apart, okay, so the first thing you got to do is just take this little pin out of here, wow, not ready again? Well, we need our punch set anyway, so let's get it out. And 
Take this pin out of here. That there. Drop the firing pin. Like that. Um, pull the cam pin out. Like that. Pull out the bolt head. Like that. You don't have to do nothing with this. Just put this aside. What has to come out when you're checking headspace, this can't sit in here properly because of the ejector pin. See the ejector pin? And that ejector pin is under spring tension underneath, a lot of spring tension. And it's being held in with a tiny roll pin. So what you have to do is compress that all the way and at the same time knock out that tiny little roll pin. Man, that is a little, little bastard too. Hope I don't screw it up. So I would think this punch would be the one. All right, if you have one of these squeezy, squeezy C clamps, these are the best to use because you can't. Uh, you really, can't, I don't even know why I'm using that. That because you don't need. I have the rubber on here, but I just put a, a brass casing on there too. But what it's doing is, in order to get that pin out, you have to press in. The extractor pin and the, the ejector pin. Once that's in and secure, now I should be able to tap that pin out. Hopefully, I won't have to hit it real hard uh, because it's, it's in there tight, but I don't know if it's going to be able to withstand me tapping. So, I'm going to try to just squeeze it a little more, make it tight, and at the same time, use this vise. And this is all. This is padded. I'm going to make it more padded. Hold on, because that's not padded enough for me. Okay, okay, what's good about um, having this vise here, because when you tap that, it's going to want to spin, you know, because you're tapping on it. I uh, put a couple pieces of electrical tape. I didn't crank it down hard, just enough to hold it there. So when I uh, tap the pin, um, it, do um, it doesn't rotate on me. Now another thing I'm going to do is that pin is so tiny, it can roll out and go right on the floor. So I'm going to, I'm going to put that there in case, it, in case that happens. Alright, the pin should come right out now. Let me get the uh, little hammer. Kind of a big hammer, it doesn't matter. Just tap easy. Alright, the spring's compressed. It's just all squished together. Now that, sh that pin should come right out. Should. Okay, popped right out. Now unclamp this. So if you're working on guns, guys, you got to get a. Um, this is called a drill press for vice. You need one of these. You need C clamps. You need all this shit because you will. If you have to struggle, that's when you screw up your your guns. You screw them up because you start getting pissed off. I preach that in my videos all the time. Okay, here is the pin that I took out, and it's not damaged at all. Thank God. Because I only have one of them. Uh, the pin's out. Now I'm going to slowly release this clamp. And now the spring and the ejector pin is going to come out of there. Now be, these are really, really tiny parts. you got to pretend you're working on a watch. You know what I mean? you got to be really, really careful. Uh, you lose one thing, you're going to be really pissed off. You're going to be ordering parts from Brownells again. Okay, so what I'm going to do is... See, the problem with this kind is when you push the button, it just goes... So I'm just going to try to wrap my hand around in case it springs out. Okay, and what you did. And then, okay, let me show you what's going on here. Now before I do that, i got to know which way the pin goes in. So if I drove the pin in, if I drove the pin out this way, that means it's got to go in this way. And just in case that hole's tapered. I don't know if it is. I'm just going to play it safe. So if it came out that way, got to go back in this way um, so there is an MP stamped on this side so I will drive the pin in on the MP stamp so okay and I'll put that there that this is to protect this so you don't squash it I really didn't need it but when I put this on there it gave me more of a more of a base on this base and kept it stable so it's a good thing to use okay there's the ejector pin you can see that now when it comes out it's it's shaped a certain way see how it's shaped it has a cut out in it watch when you take it out 
how it goes in. There's a short end <coughs> and a long end. The short end goes in first. Here it goes. There's a little spring. Now I never took this apart before so I'm going to look at the spring. Make sure it's symmetrical. Is it greased? Yes, it's greased. Does it go in any old way or just a certain way? No, it goes in any old way. So I don't have to worry about that. Okay, now my bolt is ready to be checked for headspace. Now I got to reassemble the bolt assembly. All right, now we're going to put this bolt back together minus the ejecting pin because that, you know, we had to get that out of the way. Uh, these things, um, a lot of people say, uh, make sure, make sure the extractor's on a certain side, but they, they're only, they only make them, there's a big hole in this, you can't put this on wrong, you know what I mean? Like if I had this on the wrong way, uh, this cam pin would not fit in there. You see how it's not fitting in there? It's not fitting. So what I gotta do is just spin it around, which makes the extractor on the right hand side, but if you don't know that, you just spin it around and it, it has the proper hole, it will fall in there. Okay. Now you put that in there, turn it sideways. You guys know all this, you new guys might not. Turn it sideways. When you turn that sideways, there's a hole in there and that allows the firing pin to drop down in, into there. Okay. And I just drop the firing pin down in there. Just like that. Then we'll put the cotter pin back in. Come on, Mr. Cotter. Okay. Put that bad boy in there. And she's in. But there is no ejecting pin right now. And this is now the no-go gauge, or the go gauge, whatever one I put in there first, will fit in there. Now I'm ready to check my headspace. Hold on. Yo, what's going on? All right. Well, let me see what we got here. Let me put my glasses on. I look like Corky with these friggin' glasses. Ah, will you ever see me with them? Hell no. Not if I can help it. Okay, I'm very vain, you know. All right. You know, us, us guys that used to be hot, we're vain people. Even when we're fat and we don't, we're not attractive anymore, we still worry about how we look, just some kind of, yes I was too hot, yes I was Bill, yes I was Eric, dirty people are probably arguing with me, okay, now before we put this in, of course this has to be extended, right, so you can get it in there, and what we're going to do is, without, without the gauge yet, we're going to put it in there, I never did it like this before, okay, okay, like that, and we're going to see how it locks in. And it's got a nice flush feeling back here. Nice and flush. Locks in really good. And everything looks good. Just get a quick visual of what it should look like. Okay. And take it back out. Okay. And now what I want to do is put the gauge in here. And let's see which one this one is. Okay. This is the no-go gauge. So we're going to put the no-go gauge in here. Then we're going to try to close it, and common sense, it should it should not go, right? Okay, that's good. It's a, it should not go. So it's telling me so far the headspace is correct. Now we will take the uh, no go gauge out, and what are you doing? What are you doing? And put the go gauge in there. Go gauge. And that should should work. Should. Please don't make a liar out of me. Okay. That thing keeps getting hooked on that mat. Come on, ballast all mat. You're supposed to make things easier on me, not harder. Let's do that again. The go gauge is in there. I'm sliding it in. Oops, I was almost like, wouldn't make a liar out of me. And it went in and it locked close. So the go gauge lets it go in and it locks nice and flush back here. 
okay? Of course it ejected it. And um, the no-go gauge will not let the bolt seat in place like it should, where it should. And that's how you use it. That's how you check your headspace. Now I know I can go to the gun range with confidence and feel safe that my rifle is safe. The headspace is correct. What's up? Do I sound like Harry Potterfield when I did that? It's like all serious. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put everything back together. This should be fun. And uh, let's try this. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is, of course, I got my 9mm brass on this side. And uh, actually, this has a, a cap in there, a plastic cap in there too, because I want it to be extra cautious. And uh, we are going to compress everything. So before I do that, I'm just going to put a drop of oil, just a drop, just enough to coat it. And we're going to drop our spring in that hole. Okay. And then the ejector pin, it's got a little buildup on it. So I'm going to clean that off before I put that back in there. Clean it up real good. And this is like heavily oiled, so we're going to oil this too. I guess so, because it has to... Actually, this had grease on it. So let's use grease. Grease is the word. Come and see my bird. It's pink because you stink, and I love it on your chin. Alright. Yep. I don't know where I got that from. It just flowed. It's notched out. See it? so the pin can get by it. So you gotta make sure you put that in the right way. There's the spring, and it's gonna go in like that. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give it a push and look at it to make sure I have clearance once it's all the way in, because I don't want to be messing around. Okay, you know, I hope I didn't screw up. I was hitting, I was hitting the camera button I thought it was on standby, it was on record, so I hope if something got cut out, it's my fault, guys. I, I do that shit, because I, I got, I don't want to talk about how stupid I, I am sometimes. Um, what I do is, I don't have a roll pin holder. They have these punches, they look, they're roll pin holders, so you can make one out of a speaker wire. I showed you that before. This is speaker wire, and that's fitting that pin pretty good. All it does is, it helps you get the pin in there without screwing it up. Now what I did was, I compressed everything together, the spring, the ejector pin, and all that, and I slid my punch in there. Now I know I'm, I'm home free, okay, pretty much. I know, I know it's open all the way through, so when I start hitting it, I won't be hitting the sides of anything, and this pin should, should, should go in. It's going to want to twist around on me. I should get it in the vise, but I didn't do that. The reason why you don't want that pin sticking out is because these grooves are going inside, in and out other grooves, and you don't want it scraping on that pin and causing any kind of um, resistance. And it's still, see I can, my fingernail's still on there? Got to get that all the way down. It's not a big deal. Actually, let's try this, dummy. What are you doing? Working against yourself all the time. This is the answer. Okay. I don't know why I wasn't doing that to begin with. Just a little bit more in there and I'll be happy. Because that's... I don't want nothing sticking out. That's fine. That's good. Alright guys, let's get the bolt back together. We'll give it a little test. Alright, let's throw a bolt back in. Remember, this this bolt is frog loop. Uh, now what I have to do is... Um, Check the, uh, make sure it works. Make sure she's forward. Pull it back a little. Okay, that's good. Okay. Zoom back a little, buddy. Back, 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 back. back. Okay. Okay, I gotta um, just make sure the extractor works okay because I've been messing around in that area. I have a P mag with a dummy round in there 
I just want to chamber it and then make sure uh, it uh, extracts it. Very good. Now, the next thing to do now is take it to the range. I'll put my aim point back on it in a second. And that's it. I hope this video helped you a little. I know it was hard to see what I was doing, but it's really, <coughs> there's nothing really hard uh, technically about it. It's all phys physical, simple hand coordination, really. So just be careful, take your time. Uh, try to get the compression tool if you can. It really probably make a li life a lot easier on you. Cause that's the whole, the whole part about it. I had to rig something up to make it work. So that's pretty much it. Alright guys, I'll talk to you soon.